everybody, Bob here, and welcome to another Making Stuff video. Yes, I am back out in the shop. It feels really good to be out here. I've had a little bit of a break, haven't been doing uh, much out here, but I think today I'm going to finish all of these updates that I have been working on on the CNC plasma cutter. So let's head over here to the workbench and I will show you some of the things I've done off camera since the last video. And in the last video, I left off with Linux CNC moving the stepper motors around, and that's about all I had gotten done with it. And so let's open it up, and I will show you everything I have done since the last video. Now, a lot of you guys commented and said you need a fan. I knew that I needed a fan. I just hadn't added one. Well, the fan has been added. It is right here. And I've also added this 12 volt power supply to power the fan. Now the power supply also supplies power to my torch height controller. So this power supply has a dual purpose for this application. Now I have also mounted the relay board, uh, the other power supply, and then I have got all of the little connections made down here, which you can't see from this angle, but all of the aviation connectors those have all been wired up and they are wired into the 7i96 board. So this is complete and it's ready to hook up to the machine. Uh, everything is good to go with this. And this is what the outside of the ammo crate looks like. I have added all of these aviation connectors and I have those labeled. I have got an bulkhead connector for the RJ45 right here. And then last I have 3D printed a fan shroud for the fan, so if any water or debris comes out of the water pan while cutting, it won't get sucked back up into the ammo crate. Now I've got links to all of this in the description of the video, and of course the 3D printed file for this is available on Patreon. All right, so here's another update that I'm doing to the CNC Plasma, and that is I am adding a Hypertherm PowerMax 45 XP, and this is going to add a whole lot more features. I've also added a machine torch. Uh, this will do a lot more than the Harbor Freight plasma cutter would ever do. Now don't get me wrong, that plasma cutter did work well for a year and a half, but it's just time to upgrade because I am starting to get some paying jobs rolling in, and I just needed something that would make uh, much better cuts. All right, and also I'd like to mention on that Harbor Freight plasma cutter, I had the torch height controller mounted to the side of the plasma cutter and that was because I was using the direct arc voltage for the torch height controller. Now this new plasma cutter it has a 50 to 1 voltage divider so it's not as critical to have the THC as close to the plasma cutter as possible. So what I have done instead of drilling holes in my brand new plasma cutter I have 3D printed this box this little enclosure here and I've got aviation connectors on it so that I can connect it to the plasma cutters, CPC port, and also the connections in the ammo crate. And I do have the files for this enclosure available on Patreon. So along with the new plasma cutter came a new torch, and I did order it with the machine torch, and that presented a, another problem that I had to solve and I have done this off camera, but the problem was one, the little mounting ring from the Harbor Freight plasma torch is a little bit smaller, so it didn't fit my mounting ring, so I had to 3D print a new mounting ring, and this is the floating Z from the old torch, and if you remember, I did a video on this, I'll put a link to it right up here if you haven't seen that video, but basically, this just floats, the torch mounts to this, and there's a switch here, and then that lets the uh, software know when the torch has touched off. Now the problem I had was that when I printed the larger ring and I put it on here, this torch is so long that it wanted, it wanted to flex back and forth like this. So I could not use this floating Z axis, and I had to come up with my own new version of the floating Z axis. Now this one I did, uh, design myself in SketchUp and I'm going to put the files on Patreon but this one has two rings to hold the torch it also has larger linear bearings and it works the same way it floats and there's a contact switch in here which tells Linux CNC when the torch has touched off now with that second ring that is going to make it much easier to hold this torch in place and keep it from moving around and flexing about 
Now along with the machine torch came another problem and that was this thick cable here. Now the old torch had a much softer and pliable cable. This one is much more rigid and it's hard to bend at a tight radius. So I could not zip tie it to the 3D printed cable chain like I did with the old Harbor Freight Torch. So what I had to do is come up with this and that is this cable chain that I got on Amazon and I will put a link to this in the description. Now this is a much better cable chain than that 3D printed chain that I was using and one of the reasons is it will bend one way but it will not bend backwards. It will not bend past this 180 degrees here. And that is going to help keep that more rigid cable on that machine torch from bending backwards, which is one of the problems I had with that 3D printed cable chain. It was bending backwards and then getting hung up in the belt. So this will prevent that from happening. Now this also has a feature that I like, and that is that these tabs are removable. So you can see here on the bottom, I've got the tabs in place, but I have removed them from the top. And this is going to come in real handy because now I can just lay that cable from that machine torch inside this cable chain and then snap all of these back into place. And that's going to save me from having to take that torch apart and then feed that wire through this cable chain. So that's going to come in really handy and it's going to save me a lot of time. So I've got links to this in the description. So check that out if you want to get you some cable chain like this for yourself. Okay, so I've got my cable chain here and I've got my torch cable laid out here and it's laid down in that cable. So now before I mount this onto my Z axis, I'm just gonna go through and put all of these little tabs back on here just by snapping them in place. Okay, now that I have the cable run through the cable chain and I have the cable chain mounted up here. I need something for it to rest on so that it just doesn't hang in the middle of the air or drag on my workpiece. And I think what I'm going to do is just bend a piece of sheet metal at a 90 degree angle and then mount it to the gantry using these rivet nuts. Now I just recently made a video on rivet nuts and I'll put a link right there in the uh, video and it's also going to be in the description, but that explains more about ribbon nuts and how they work But basically it's an easy way to put threads in thin metal like this thin walled uh, tubing steel or sheet metal All right, so I've got it all hooked up. I've got my angle iron mounted to the gantry I've got the cable chain <laughs> mounted to the angle iron and also the Z and X axis up here so what I have done is I have disconnected the X axis motor from the stepper driver so that it doesn't back feed when I move this, but I'm just gonna move it here and make sure that everything moves and it doesn't bind and it's looking good. So that seems to have solved the issue with the cable chain, the stiff cable here and my Z axis. So now I think I'm ready to actually put this new plasma cutter to use. All right, so there we go. There's my test cut, a Hackaday logo, the Jolly Wrencher, and that did not turn out too bad for a first cut. There is just a little bit of dross on it, but I think I can probably dial that new torch in, uh, make some more cuts with it, and even get a better cut than this. But uh, I'm happy for a first cut that turned out really well. So that's all of the updates I'm going to be making to this CNC plasma machine. So if you made it this far, you had to like the video, 
So thanks for hanging out with me in the shop today. Please give me that big thumbs up and smash that like button. And if you're not a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing that notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.